As Nashville became the first Confederate capital to fall, a pro-Union Tennessean would take over state government and the capital itself. Andrew Johnson did not resign his seat when his state seceded from the Union. He remained in Congress. Lincoln rewarded that loyalty by naming him the military governor of occupied Tennessee. Capitol Hill was renamed Fort Andrew Johnson. He swore that he would not see the city fall into Confederate hands and he'd rather see the city fall down around him rather than give up. So he even fortified Capitol Hill. Even with 21 hospitals in the city, the medical system was so stressed following fighting at Murfreesboro along the Stones River that over 9,000 federal troops were sent here by rail. They couldn't absorb them in the hospitals of Nashville, so they used these hallways of the Capitol as part of the hospital for several days following the fighting at Murfreesboro. Two statues in particular reflect the history of the Civil War. One is David Glasgow Farragut. He was the first admiral ever in the United States Navy. Before that, you could only be a Commodore. He was from near Knoxville. He represents part of the Tennessee story in the Civil War. The other man is facing him down directly across the hall. He's Nathan Bedford Forrest. Brilliant cavalry leader, but also a slave trader before the Civil War. He was accused of massacring the Fort Pillow garrison during the war, a black garrison, and being a founder of the Ku Klux Klan following the war. These men signify what Tennessee did to itself from 1861 to 1865. It was literally a war within a family. East Tennessee was pro-Union, Middle and West Tennessee were pro-Confederate, and we were at war with each other within our state boundaries. And these two statues, I think, are a key part of telling that story, and that's why they're here in the, in the building.